The NAL is no stranger to imports or representation from players outside the United States and Canada, but today it faces something that it's never seen before. Los has up and left its position in the Brazil League to join the North American League, and their debut matchup is against Oxygen Esports. It's Lowe's and OXG for game two here on what is Dick two, but also technically play day one. It's a whole mishmash of whatever we're trying to figure out here. Welcome back. I'm Jacob. He's Laxing. He's Foxy. Gentlemen, I like this game on paper, but I have no idea how it's going to go. It's it's a it's a doozy for me. I mean, we're bringing an entirely different, brand new team from a different region to be now competing in the NAL, where we've seen imports do that from yep. different regions, just even the last game in and itself. But we've never seen an entire roster come from one region now compete in the other. I love these two rosters. Go being able to go up against each other for the first time, no information. They both have a bunch of new things in the way that they play. All the teams, that they're all trying to be two brand new teams at this point, and I feel like it's a perfect synergy, a perfect, I can't find the word, but a perfect balance. I, I don't know the Come word. Come on, man. The, you're, a perfect, you're getting paid to talk now. It's like a perfect situation, scenario. Of situation. These two teams. I don't know He's the word. He's making up words now. I don't know the word, but <laughs> it's pretty much OXG trying to become a whole new team, their ideology, the way they fundamentally play, and then Lowe's being a brand new team all in itself. It's a perfect can't think of the word, but when I think of it, we'll come back to it. But you know what I'm saying? The people at home know what I'm saying. You're looking for circumstance, maybe? You're looking for, you, you said situation. Scenario, perfect. Scenario works. Come on. I don't know, parallel. We'll go with that word. Parallel could also Perfect work, parallel. Suppose. It is two teams that made a bunch of changes and trying to find a new identity, and that's the whole point of this first week, is figuring out where these guys land with the pieces that they've picked up. But let's start with Los. Even though we did a whole bunch of coverage for them yesterday, we'll still bounce over most of the same points here. Fox, where have all of these guys come from, and how much experience do they have? Well, the most experienced player is obviously Sexy Cake. We touched a little bit yesterday on it that he has the most history on this roster but obviously bursa played on a prior furia team rise actually played on the old lowe's team and was an analyst for the old lowe's team and then farius and legacy are brand new rookies they've only played in the t2 scene on a team one academy in brazil so they have a lot of talent those two rookies have not been cultivated yet this is their first t1 experience and they have three pretty much historical players that have a little bit of experience of what not to do. None of the teams besides Sexy Cake on Liquid knows success besides that team. So they have a lot of experience on what not to do. Now they're coming together, hopefully finding what to do on this team. And that's another beauty about bringing all these guys from a different region now playing, competing in the NAL is even for Bursa and for Rise, for just the entire roster across the board, None of these players from Oxygen are going to know what you do. Even playing in a rank setting, in an FPL setting, like whatever that has looked like, you're going to have no read on any of these players. And that is such an advantage for Los. Yeah, also, crazy, crazy situation. The house that we saw Los in right now yep. is the exact same house with carpet, the OXG, the, our old <laughs> OXG house. Is, Wait, that's literally your house? Is the exact is, same the house. house. No way. It's the exact same house just reskin. So they're they're literally a street away from where the old OXG house was, which is wow. just crazy we found that out. It would have been even funnier if they were actually in the old <laughs> OXG would house. Be, that because would be because they're, they're playing against OXG in OXG's old fortress. That actually would have been crazy. But I didn't even realize that. That's you, wait, what I'm saying. Did you, you looked at that interior. I at the house and I was wait, like, wait no, a minute. I've been there before. That's a newsroom. Yeah. Like, that's, Honestly, that would have made the top floor a lot better if it was carpet. That's what I'm saying. I think that's why I'm saying this situation, this game, is it couldn't have been written <laughs> more in the stars they're literally in the exact same house that the that old is OG literally house was. the exact same house well i mean hey uh, there are only so many parallels that we can have in this matchup let's talk about the way oxg is, is shaping up oh there's fox right oh, there brother. in the departed column for oxg they decided to move on not just from the retired guy who literally can't play anymore because he's retiring but now they don't have fish on the squad and they're bringing two components of that old m80 x set core to reunite with another guy who was also on X set in Yaga. So what do we think about this team? Well, they did get two really solid pickups of both Diaz and both Gomez coming from Eddie M80. And they do have that synergy with Yaga already of being back on the formerly known as an X set roster. So there is that camaraderie. There is that synergy with these teams. But the biggest question for me is losing the IGL of Fox 
Fox was such a pivotal piece of OXG throughout my He's career. Right throughout next to you, man. Come on. Well, you have to talk about though. It's such an important piece that made OXG, that made the reciprocity roster of having that experience. And now that experience isn't there. That IGL calling isn't there. And the question for me is, who from this team is going to pick up on that and lead that charge? Because it has to be there. Because again, Fox was such an integral piece for this roster. If they were swap, uh, staying on the same format that we played that when I was a part of the team, obviously there would be some worries on, on my side of things. But with speaking with the rest of the players, I know that especially Yogg, he really was a big fan of the M80 exit system. Obviously bringing in Gomez and Diaz as two more pieces to that system. They're really trying to be a lot more fluid. And when it comes down to that mid to late leadership, you know, you'd be surprised, but Doers is very comfortable making play calls like that off of the fly. So they really want to be a lot more flexible. They don't want to be static. They want to change the identity of the team and picking up two players of Gomez and Diaz adds that structure and Gomez has had a phenomenal year this last year so I think picking up him specifically just adds an extra element of entry and flexibility so I think these two pickups are really good as opposed to you know me and Fish. I really hate to do this to you but the reason why those guys are here is because everything that was trying to work for OXG last year just kind of what I'm looking for the political way to dance around the fact it's that okay. OXG just oh, wasn't that good. OXG, OXG was like, just not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. That was the worst version I think you've seen of OXG. Plain and simple. And I can say that because I was a former player on the team. I know what it was like. You know, it's no it's no slight to you. I no, thought no, that it's, it's, I thought that clash play was amazing. Thank you. But outside of that, everything else was Music. It was true. It was a very, we had a very big identity crisis in this last year, and obviously they're trying to correct that. And I give them huge props. I think they made the right decision with going with Gomez and Diaz, yep. as opposed to some of the other opportunities they could have gotten. I'm happy they stuck with those two. No, and I think losing Fox, like you have to be getting at least two people, especially getting rid of Fish as well. You have to be getting two people that are going to be able to pick up on that and change that identity of the team. Yeah, they still had the chance, both of these guys, to go to every event. Again, even if M80 did not advance very far in the events that they went to so guys like ds last year uh so many kills over every event that he was in that's like 600 kills to 500 deaths the same thing goes for gomez but you have to find a way to take both of those pieces and utilize them in a new thing it's not to say that just because three pieces of that old x set m80 team are together that they're going to adopt the same thing right because you still have to find a way, a way for dream and newers to yeah, connect yeah. and you got to find a way to say like for redeemer and hopes to say you know what this team actually can go somewhere absolutely every team is obviously going to be different with the way that they come together but they have that synergy with Yaw, Gomez, and Diaz. And I've been saying, Gomez is the most improved player of this last year. And I think Diaz is also the most consistent player of this last year. So getting that little bit of consistency that maybe I had and getting a player with Gomez that has such a high ceiling to kind of replace Fish, I feel like at the end of the day, it's a win-win and they're in their best situation possible, especially in this matchup against Los. A big reason why we keep harping on OXG is because it's the established team that has some changes. Los, we don't know anything about him. So for band phase concerns, we have Oregon, so we can tell whether that's a good or a bad thing for Oxygen. We just don't know anything about well, those right that's now. that's what's perfect, though, is at least in Oxygen's favor here, is you are going against a team that you don't know and what they do, but you're playing a map like Oregon, and it's such a default map that there's nothing that you're really going to be caught off guard from. It doesn't matter what region you're playing against. Oregon's just a pretty in-your-face map, straight to the point. So it's just a matter of finding those kills, finding those trains is what's really going to set you apart from the other team. Oh, that stresses me out that they they let it go to Oregon. Obviously, OHG is a very comfortable Oregon team. I know a lot of players We were terrible love at that basement map. back then. <laughs> I mean, we were, but it's a very comfortable map for them. But it's scary because we had this ideology on OXG where you never take a team that you are better than to Oregon. That was the ideology, right? You never take a team that you are better than to Oregon. And if you're OXG and you look at this matchup, not to give Los any hate, but I would argue that OXG right now, just because they've proven themselves to me, I would say that they are the better team. So taking them to a map like that obviously limits the amount of different variables, but in the same time, it's anybody's ball game when it comes to that map. You've seen insane upsets, and if you're playing against a team with limited info, it's that much harder because, yes, there's not a crazy amount of things that you could do, Yeah. but those, if you are able to find a new way to entry into blue, a new way to entry into master, these different ways and the play styles don't match up, you could just completely get ran on, especially on defense. Does that do anything to your prediction then? Are you worried about OXG enough to think that maybe they let this one slip? Guys, what are we thinking? So I said Los and specifically it now being Oregon. It's a map again where it, it does favor, in my opinion, it favors OXG, but again, yeah. you're it's an even playing field when you play on default maps. It's really just who's gonna show up that day and this is the best of one. And if you come out of a team that's just swinging hot, 
I, I'm still going to stick with Los here. You're going Los, and you're you're not budging from that. No. What about I'm you? definitely I'm definitely scared for OXG. A little bit on the map pick, but I'm going to stay with OXG. I definitely think <sighs> it's just I think it's their day. They still they the come company, to man. <laughs> they want to come to prove. They're, I bet you they're watching at home. They see me and Lax on the couch, and they're like, "Wow, these guys are going to be talking up a oh, storm." Oh, Hopes and Redeem are definitely just roasting talking me right up, now. Just yapping about OXG. So I know they're at home. They're playing like they, they really want to show themselves as a team that has just been able to find their new identity. I really think that they're going to take it on this. We got to change those percentages, by the way, because me and Fox are sitting at 100%, while Jesse is at a whomp whomp zero. Yeah, Jesse's not doing too hot. He ain't getting that one. belt. But he picked OG for this one, so I hope you're wrong, and then I'll be at 100%. <laughs> so. so that's the thing with having three analysts to figure out which one of them comes out ahead. You can't keep siding with one every time. Someone had to side with Jesse at some point today, and I know he's watching, and hopefully he won't be in the 0% trench for too much longer. Guys, that's all we have to say about this one. It's finally time for Lowe's to get their debut in the NAL and for OXG to figure out if those roster changes were the right move after all. It's Lynx and Stokes with the call. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Sam. I think Jake just made an error. Did he say Los in the NAL? That can't be right. I mean, uh, you know, I'm checking, I'm checking the, I'm checking the stick over here, Carter. Uh, they, they, they've, they've actually cleared. Their visas have cleared. No. Therefore, yes, they are in the NAL. Welcome to it, Los. And wow, specifically, Los, I may I just say, welcome, Sexy Cake, to NA. One of my favorite players throughout the history of NA, and or rather NA, Rainbow Six in general, right? And uh, yeah, just a historical phenom when it comes to the you know, title Rainbow Six. So. Did, you, did, did you think when you're sitting there casting SI19, SI2020, that you'd be casting Sexy Cake in North America? Is that just like a, the weirdest sentence to you? Like, does that even, like, can you even make sense of that? So honestly, honestly, I can't, especially because like, you know, I have a decent bit of history with Sexy K. Actually, the, the clip from SI 2019, his, uh, his clutch during, uh, against Mocket, that was the first SI I ever casted. I only casted the group stage and that one like clip of the year for esports because Sexy uh, K is such boy. a goddamn good player. So it's, it's beautiful, man. I'm excited to have him in North America. I'm excited to have him up against this retooled oxygen, which even Fox himself giving the stamp of approval saying that they're going to take it to the Brazilians. I mean, at least for me, the 2022 X set roster, and technically, they were technically M80 at SI23, but that kind of era, I liked it. Were they the best roster? No, but they consistently made international events, consistently made quarterfinals of majors, and were also just an entertaining team. Now, we're comparing this roster to 2022 X set. They are missing a key player that I'm a fan of, In Spirits, who I think was a small but maybe maybe decently sized maybe uh even big part of that's that roster success that's just me i'm a big spirits fan and he's obviously not here instead they have you know just newers and dream one of the uh most one of the best entries in north america at least statistically speaking over the past couple years and dream sam one of the best supports in north america over the past couple years so if you're adding those two players to that kind of or that seems like a good combination on paper yeah, no, totally, totally agree. Uh, especially for Oxygen's sake with these pickups. I mean, especially like you were saying with that core and adding Yaga on top of that, which was our number one player in North America last year. And honestly, didn't have like the worst showing playing with M80 at SI. Things were kind of obviously discombobulated with that team. That's uh, pretty forthcoming now with what we just saw happen with the roster, right? So, uh, you, you know, I think all things considered, Oxygen have done a bang up job of being able to put together a redeemable roster you could say here for the year so we'll see what oxygen are capable of i'm very very excited especially once again with ps uh, as well as gomez come in and gomez obviously excited too you see how many z's he put after his name here for this bag he's uh he's preempting like you know when you hit a nice shot and you just type z z z z z he's preempting a lot of angers that's gonna hit this game he's gonna be like spawn peek in bedroom door or like running out bunker and one tapping people and it's just in anticipation of that i mean to be fair, Fox said Gomez might be one of the most improved players over the past, you know, let's say year of the NAL. I would probably agree with him on that statement. I think Gomez has really made leaps and bounds in his own gameplay over the past year, year and a half or so. And I think reuniting with Yaga, the highest rated player in the NAL last year, and also having some great players to rely on, and the DS Gomez duo lives another roster mania. I hope to see him really perform this game, especially when he's got MP5 ACOG, and he seems to be quick, small power to start out his first round on OXG. 
Yeah, at this point, Diaz and Gomez have to be studying. I mean, they're practically like conjoined twins at this point. They just, they never leave each other's side. As you said, roll this ship on over to Oxygen's port and see if they can potentially only get some silverware. Back up that name has been such sub players for so long, but I haven't been able to find the success that has afforded them. They're so desperately looking for on an international stage. So if things can potentially turn around here with this new roster as we'll get things going oxygen is going to be on defense it's going to be a basement defense i know you're all very shocked as we're starting things off here on oregon i'm going to bring, bring in the deployable shield here for newer is more than likely going to be playing things out inside of elbow and it's going to be overall a turtle defense for the defense and and with that shield and elbow i mean we're expecting sexy cake on the bullets to eventually sort of butt heads with that player newer is playing inside of elbow i mean when you see the blitz on oregon if it's on dorms, he may be going through attic window or big window, but some window of some kind. Here, he's probably going through the bunker double door and sending it up elbow. Either to maybe get a kill on that player, but most importantly, just to push him back, get control of that rotate before they can get the reinforcement off, and then you're chilling. Sexy Cake, by the way, actually having a very solid year last year inside of Daw. I think if you haven't been familiar with his game since Liquid, you're thinking hard breach, hard support. He's actually been on a bit more of an aggressive streak and also the second highest rated player on E1. He played for that team in Brazil. Very nice. Now, not exactly the thing you would expect out of Sexy Cake in that last year either. As you'd said, his early career was definitely hard support, you know, playing things hard breach, playing things like smoke on defense, and he did such a solid job of that. But it doesn't mean that he can't work his way into other things. And we're seeing here for Lowe. Speaking of working their way in, a lot of info pouring its way on this. Down to one drone here for Lowe. So they should understand the general setup that Oxygen are going for. And now it's down to crunch time. They have to try and get this round going their way. Haven't had a pick just yet. Haven't found exactly the way that they want to try and barrel their way in as they will be adjusting over towards that backside oh. sexy cake is gonna be the one to try and work his way up and this blitz has been able to at least open the floodgates for Lowe's so he'll get quite a few kills off onto oxg sexy cake is gonna take some solid damage as well no home for the case just yet but as soon as i say that leg you'll see it will start things off gomez does still have a nice cross but he gets gunned down by the player over in freezer it's all up to ds to try and clutch things out he'll do so to start off as he's fully stunned but Lowe's the very explosive finish to round one is they will completely flip the script on the defense, Carter. They kind of get them to think it's going to be that E-drop as well as construction take, but instead, in the dying moments, they flip things over to freezer and laundry and find some success off the back of that blitz. Sam, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. Keep it a buck, my boy. I have no idea what just happened. Like, literally not a, like, not a single idea. <laughs> I mean... Listen, up until the rotate, from backstairs to laundry, I'm good. Like, oh no, Los have no drones. Los don't have any control in pillar. They don't have the open pick. They don't even have control of E-Box because an Azami is still alive, putting up Kibas, stopping anybody from dropping. I know exactly how this round is going to go. And then we cut to Sexy Cake on Blitz in laundry. Fine, whatever. Oh, it is now a 5v2 in Los's favor. I mean, sometimes you just hit the rotate and the gunfights go your way. That seemed to be what happened. But how does a round go the way of Los that quickly and that dominantly from so little of anything? Mm -hmm. It's so it's so hard to call on the ball. It's it's just one of those scenarios where really you gotta you gotta chalk it up with the swing, right? It feels like Oxygen got caught off guard with the adjustment, and yeah, they were there to try and at least some of those gunfights that we were shown inside of the kill feed. But Los were way more prepared for that scenario as they, I mean, hotly contested Freezer as well as Laundry. And I think, honestly, Carter, a lot of those kills that we saw from that kill feed, I think coming in from that Freezer position, able to kind of open up the back end there, what was now the obvious front side take there for Los as they were able to try and work their way in from Laundry. But yeah, those kills over towards Freezer Hall and such, really making it possible for Los to try and barrel their way in on top of the pressure that we had already gotten from the Blitz. I mean, Sexy Cake didn't kill anybody. He just worked his way in there, flashed someone to back them off, and just started making a mockery of Oxygen's defensive situation. So now with round two on the board here for them, looks like Oxygen is going to try and send this up to Kid's dorms to try and see if they can potentially get one over on Los. And to Lowe's credit, if we see them when they, you know, one, realize that a take isn't going their way, two, rotate very quickly and get into the proper positions very quickly, but three, also get kills with literally no intel as they had no drones left, 
that's going to be really good for their attacking side on Oregon. A side where often you're forced to just flood in through a couple doorways or down a couple stairwells. Dorms is no different. If Lois get caught up hunting the Solus inside of Attic, Yaga will rotate off. But if they then struggle to open up these reinforcements or struggle up to or struggle to get control over by Big Window and White, the ability to rotate quickly, play off your teammate, and get kills with low time and low control, that's something that'll serve them well on any of these bomb sites in Sam. We're at a minute 20 left, and that low control, low time point is starting to rear its head again. Uh, honestly, at this moment in time, I'm not going to be concerned with it for Lowe's until we see something just drastically go wrong. It seems like they are really dedicated to their info game and having a good understanding of what this defense wants to do. And so far, honestly, so good. They're going to be able to get some damage off. Yaga's going to take a few pellets into the back end there from the kitchen position. But honestly, all things considered, I'm surprised that he still has as much HP as he does. I'm just going to sneak back closer towards the white stairs here, but definitely in shooting distance when it comes to these default angles you usually see implemented on the top floor. But Lois haven't been able to coil around the site just yet in the way that they would necessarily want to. And that's going to start now here at the 30 second mark. You can see as Ash works her way up white stairs. We're also going to have that player over towards the double. Also, those two working their way in towards Attic. So it's going to be a full shove here from Los on every entry point that they can muster. But Auction, so far, so good as it comes to clearing out a lot of these angles. Big kills coming through. Lexi's going to go down as well and rise. What do you have in store for us? He's got somebody playing on the dorm's door, but it's going to be Diaz to clean it up with the pistol. And Oxygen finally get their first round as defense. And as opposed to basement, that is how the setup in round two should usually end. Because we're at a minute 20. Lois's intel game, is, despite his solace being on the board and a very poor showing in the first round, is actually quite strong. Seven drones left at about the minute 20, minute mark left in the round. But what do they have? Well, they barely had any hard breach. They only had two hard breach charges. But OXG are running an open setup inside a bedroom, so you don't need as much. So what do you have at your disposal? Well... They've opened up the attic wall, but only about a minute, 10 seconds. Two minute left, only once Yaga gave up that position. Do they have any pressure on the white stairs? They've got pressure, but they don't have any control as Oxygen are still able to play inside of dorms. Okay, well, how about Big Window? Well, because you don't, haven't dealt with the dorms player, Sexy Kate can't fall in the Big Window. Lowe's don't really have anything, so they're forced to flood in, and some kills go their way, but that is how a low control, low time execute should usually go if the defense has the advantage. They take you down, you likely get the opening pick, trade it to the end, and take the round as a result. Yep. It's not enough exploitation out of Lois, Lois there, just didn't really have any options. And that's the issue with those low time executes, as you were saying, right? You really don't have the ability to call an audible uh, as you try and deal with things there in the dying times of that round. Now here for round three, Oxygen retool themselves back into the basement. Gomez got an extended hold here. And uh, that right there, Carter, that's why that is a risk. You know, it's not something I touch on every ever so often because a lot of the times these players end up just making it out by the skin of their teeth. Not this time around. Gomez gets clipped as he tries to run up shower hallway. And of all the operators, there's really two that you don't want to lose early, and it's going to be Wamai and Lesion. And as both of them have that time-based utility, they're going to be sorely missing some magnets going into the latter half of this. Lamai, Legion, Azami on the defense operators that are notorious for regenerative utility, and in the case of Azami and Wamai, extremely powerful utility. Oh, I would say Legion as well, especially. Wamai. Really all three, you don't want to lose early. And while they've lost the Wamai, you still have Yaga with four Kibas pocket, wasting time in Big Tower again. This is a position where they can very well make up for the early loss of Gomez. If these two players can waste time on that side for a long time, and Los maybe aren't able to counter. Maybe they got intel in the big tower position, but if, I don't know, <laughs> Furious gets stuck on a rotate in between kitchen, maybe you won't have time to unfortunately get the hard recharge before oxygen rotate back. So, 4v5, sure, but half the round wasted. OXG now rotating back down to the east palm site where all of those Kibas are still in play, and those Kibas did basically single-handedly repel Los's E-Box drop all the way back in round one. And once again, Los being a competition with the Simer, but when it comes to the basement, there are some prerequisites that you must hit, and the first thing is the hatches. 
So we've seen out of love so far as they were quickly able to deal with the mid four threat. And down Gomez over towards Shower. Pretty lucky shot coming in from that window, but almost able to build off the back of that thus far. Dream as well as the rest of Oxygen though. Pretty aware of what the situation is more likely going to be. Sexy Cake tries to work his way in here and Dream with a beautiful shot. And all things considered, especially with the bees there, I'm surprised that there was no backup from Lois to try and assist him. But either yeah. way, end up losing that out. Rise finds one over for construction. Maybe that's the angle that was fired there to try and assist as that player got backed off from the Monty. But either way, Lois still able to get into a 2v1 somehow, some way. Burst is going to start this plant. They have the cross. It's all up to Newers, who has been one of the most mechanically gifted players to enter the scene in North America in the last couple of years here. Maybe an opportunity for him to show that talent once again. And across Freeze Hall. Bringing up things now. The goo mine taking in Bursa's foot. Those one player is at least in the corner. A prone angle. He has no idea about either player's position. Has no idea which way it could have gone. Newer's going to try and wrap around. He guns down Bursa. But now on low time, he's going to have to try and flirt with the case. Up we'll to see if Legacy can hit his shot. Newer's going to stick it. That's going to be all she wrote there for the round, as Los will be able to take that one once again. Low time to execute, but we see the vision. We see the idea from Los here. If they're able to understand where these swings are going to come from, they're able to win this first volley of, you know, engagements, they're more than likely able to work things out in the end into a successful scenario. I mean, they've literally just gone their way to not only two attacking wins on Oregon, but they've gone their way to two attacking wins on basement. They've caught not just one player rotating in front of a window, but as you'll likely see in these replays, they've caught two different players gunning or rotating. You see, of course, Newers here fall the 1v1. We also see Diaz rotating to that Mira in small closet, caught by the guy pushing up laundry, who then pushes further and wins his one against Yaga, who's trapped behind the laundry machine behind the Kiba barricade. Two rounds now. Lowe's have one basement attack by just flooding in and winning fights. They've been very low control, not a lot of util, and even with those Grims, they're still dropping bodies, but they've just won enough gunfights to round one, win the round off that alone, in round, well, the second basement attempt, win it off a plant in a 1v1 in the post, and now they've taken the lead on attack and OXG are looking mighty unconvincing on one of the best bomb sites on the map. Yeah, fully well, we have to agree with you. I, I think the thing that we've seen from Low so far is that they are playing a very standard form of Rainbow Six. I mean, you look across the years of Siege and you see different play styles, right? This is just fundamentally sound. They open things up very methodically, very slowly, use their info game to its fullest advantage. They don't try and give up kills early. And then they try and work a portion of the map with the majority of the team together, right? You might have like two units working things, you know, two people over on freezer, two people laundry, but they then have that one player that works their way in on late time once you get that vision drawn from the site. Uh, and it's just so beautiful so far from Los. I really like uh, how fundamentally we've been seeing them try and exploit oxygen, especially on a map like Oregon, because like you were saying, Carter, a lot of these low time things don't usually work out, but when you're able to take fights in the way that you are and find success with them, I mean, there's really no no reason to really stop it up right now they've been able to find success and they're going to continue to try and work the map in the way that they've found ways to work it so far oh not, that wow. set up. The, <laughs> double i mean i guess technically i didn't see macy j i think it was get flanked i first saw a tweet about that but yeah the double claymore double goo mine even and the uh multiple p90 shots into bursa oh. got the opening pick for oxg viewers viewers play around the corner as ds finds his second ball leave over by the armor position. Yep, Sola sitting inside of it. Oh, oh new ones. Good night, good night, GN, GN. But it seems to be a very sleepy round for Los in round four. 1v4 for Legacy. He's goo mine and knows the Solus is there, but so do OXG. They know where this lion is, especially once the 417 gives away his position. And look at how much health has gone from that goo mine, Sam. Look at how much health has gone now that he is deciding he wants to go for the 4K. He is actually... I will say, in contrast oh. to his... Well... <laughs> round four goes away of OXG. Uh, I'll take that for things you don't see every day. Although He's we just... already did have one for uh, Fresh's cross... Not, I almost said crossword. Uh, but yeah, his tic-tac-toe tic -tac -toe. thing, whatever it is. Yeah, I can't remember. Bingo, there it I is. Just, yeah. I, love, I, I love... He just accepted his fate. Like, I just... I watched him stop moving on white stairs on 1HP, and I was like, he just... 
He's letting the goo mine take him. <laughs> Let the archangels take him right there on white stairs via goo mine. Oxygen able to tie things up after uh, unorthodox defense. Oh, not something you really see a lot of teams lean on. But hey, when things haven't been working out, you got to try something new. They split into kitchen as well as meeting, but we don't really get to see that. What we really see is Los trying to deal with this top floor setup from Oxygen in a bunch of different ways. Some solid info work, but really what it came down to was them trying to deal with a few of these uh, you know, odds and ends from Oxygen across the map and ended up getting tied up in those knots. Lots of kills going the way of Oxygen, which before we were touching on Los, I'm able to find their clearance, at least through the map in that regard, and able to make things a little bit more difficult for Oxygen when it came down to that hardcore crunch time moment. But this time around, obviously not the case. Los is going to have to try and readdress things. They do have some extra info here, I meaning with the Grim, and also Buck working, or Buck, my goodness. Glass working his way in as well is a pretty interesting operator choice for a scenario like this. I see the glass on the side. I mean, it's got to be a big window take, right? It, right? it has to be. I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna smoke off the bedroom wall and sit in the tiniest room imaginable, hard scoping an angle, waiting for somebody to peek. Even if you're in the smoke, this is, just screams to me big window white, big window white. Now, big window white, white, or really any take on Oregon, it's gonna be difficult when the moment the prep phase begins, you're already down to five drones. Sign up prep phase, action phase, and it looks like. Before we've even reached 50 seconds in, you've lost Sexy Cake, your Nomad, currently 0 5, unfortunately, but also before Sexy Cake could really use any of his primary utility. Very, very uh, mediocre, just putting it mildly. Really curious as to uh, why we haven't seen Los really reach for Bravo or Twitch yet either, just because they do get those extra drones. And they've been pretty heavy so far on the info game, so maybe we see an adjustment coming here in the next round. Is This is fairly on the nose for what they were trying to go for across the board here. And Oh my goodness, DS. What a shot out of the cog here on well, my new implication is a couple moments here in the you know recent history of Siege. He did have the 1.5, which I mean, personally, my favorite gun on defense, MP5K with the 1.5 was just something magical. But we've got it back with the COG. Feels great. This little lineup there is able to take down that player on the double window. And Los, worse for wear is an understatement. They have practically no drones, at least operable ones. Oh, on second glance, we do have one here on Finca. But either way, nothing really to do with the last minute besides prey. I mean, I mean, they got the bees, I guess. They, they've got... They've got four canisters for Grim and oh. Furious. Okay. He's got a kill on a dream. That's something. Honestly, for this round so far, Lois have really not had much of anything, which is a bit weird, considering that on two basement rounds, they had nothing and got two victories there. So maybe they can do it again. In a 3v4, now that they found Dream, Rise also knows that this player, DS, is playing hard right on that big window. This is a very difficult position to escape from, especially when the attackers have intel. Anybody from Lowe's help him inch? It seems like that's not going to happen. Special once Rise just steals his own fate, evolving into a, a frost mat on Big Window, and Bursa has now been found inside of Ag Attic. Those Grim Bees do him no good. OXG retake their lead, and it seems if it's not basement, it's no problem. Yeah, most definitely. And Oxygen have been able to find their stride on this defense. I think they've got a really solid understanding of the way that Los to try and go about this. And it's really through that info game. We see them constantly using these drones, trying to understand the positioning of the defense, trying to understand the setup on these bomb sites. But we've only really seen them hit their mark twice. And to be honest with you, Carter, it's it's been very high risk, high reward scenarios. They've been kind of bullheadish about things and able to fight fire with fire. But now Oxygen have been able to make these little adjustments, make it to where Los aren't really capable of going about things in the same way. And I especially like it off of their positioning, right? They deal such a solid damage to the info game and then start you know playing these off angles oh, yeah, playing these off engines playing prone things like that that make it so very difficult to kind of have that general understanding when you walk into a place because as we both know info in siege does not last that long yeah you might know where a reinforcement is you might know where a jaeger ads is but these people have feet they're gonna move around and it's gonna make things complicated for you when you really don't understand things going into execution time that's what we've seen so far from low so i'm really hoping in round six maybe we can get something like a twitch something like roteros like i was talking about in that last round something that gives them more info utility to try and assist with uh some of these pressure points 
Something we didn't mention, by the way, uh, this happened on the previous base defense, and it's happening again. We have a we have an interesting mirror setup, Sam. I don't know if you noticed this. So you know, on basement, kind of. You have the default mirror in the small closet, right? And then you usually have a mirror most of the time in freezer if you have a specific setup in Evox, right? Like I think you and I can agree those are some of the default positions. Yes. So XG have both of their mirrors in the small closet, one standing height, one crouch height next to each other. That's so real of them. That, I, it, I honestly it, love that. It is. It is it's very based out of them. And the reason that it's based is because that closet position is so very important for playing things out when it comes to laundry as well as freezer and giving that extra vision especially for that leftward panel because i'm assuming that's going to be the one that's crouched I, I mean you can find some incredibly cheesy angles going over towards freezer and this might be oxygen's answer to what los really had going on on that uh you know previous round where they did end up working their way in via those angles so as you said, they did have that implemented previously. Don't know exactly how many gunfights came from that because we didn't really get to see it play out all that much. But yeah, either way. That's, that's the ultimate issue, right? I mean, like, we could talk about this era setup. We could talk about all this stuff. But, like, even with all the utility, I mean, the Kibas that have now actually been dropped by OXG, utility, Lowe's have still been able to flood in twice and just win at least enough gunfights to get themselves to a plant. And at best, in the case of round one, just win enough gunfights, period to make the round almost impossible for OXG to come back. Here, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, we're in a similar position. Minute left, low drones for Los. All this utility going out, the Grim Bees, the Capitol Bolts, and not a lot of immediate follow-up. But they've made the impossible happen twice now. They have called lightning down on OXG's head, and by divine providence, it has struck the exact same spot. So what are they going to do here? 5v5. Smoke bolts have gone out. Nothing. Grim bees have gone out. Nothing. Three drones left, and we barely have any control to speak of. How are they going to make this work? I can tell you it's not going to be via Rotero drones. It's definitely going to be via gunfire. The more bees in for the pillar position. Two people building themselves up for the stairwell. A drop in some e box. In a moment, the Gomez must take control. They'll be able to take one, but they now know where the bulk of this push is coming from. Grim moving his way up and in, but he'll get gunned down from Dream on the cross, who can't win things out in Freezer either. Los with five seconds. I mean, you must find the case, which is upstairs. They have to get the kill. Struggle will be two, and that's going to be the round. Los, we had so much damn time. How are we leaving the case on the mid floor? Oh my God. Oh boys, let's go. Woo. Hey, we got Stokes rage on the first day. It's technically second day, but the first day. I mean, first, listen, the second, the second broadcast day, the first day of matches. So, so they've left case on the middle floor, which is not ideal. Um, <laughs> not conducive to victory, not, I would not say. Not conducive for a round victory. That's very ironic, by the way, considering they won the second basement attack they did by moving it into the post plant. But hey, it happens. Toms get muddied. Mistakes get made. It's the first day of NAL for them, too. All good. What I still find the most interesting, what I still find the most <laughs> improbable is, again... Los almost won on a basement flood with just a couple B's pillar side, a very late rotation, and minimal intel. They still got it to a 3v2. They still got it to an advantage. It's still a 4 2 half. OXG are still coming away the victors. And let's see how these attacks go. But just a very strange set of basement defenses that I can't help but keep. Yeah, no. And you have every right to, because it's not something that you see every day. But. I mean, for Los's sake, uh, the setup is really, really solid. You know, the, the main areas where you would want extra bodies, they have people there. You've got multiple people handling laundry, multiple people handling, uh, you know, pillar. Uh, and, and that's really what it takes the whole claim on for that basement area is just those key pivotal positions like that, you know, like elbow on top of that, as well as that central room that make that site so very volatile for the offense because there's so many little coves that you have to worry about that the defense can simply just hide away and use good utility and more than likely thwart your entire game plan. But instead, Los are able to bat oxygen over the head twice for some basement defenses. And honestly, 
I mean, I think all things considered, they might have saved their bacon if they're able to get the ball rolling on this defensive end because option and all of those other defenses, Carter, look so very solid. And two for half might just be all you need. We'll have to see how this first attack from OXG goes. It's, I mean, I suppose slower if you want to call it that. I mean, I don't, those basement attacks are just almost incomparable, but OXG have gone things about in a much more standard way. I think a lot of us are used to. They've moved across the map, taking control of the middle floor, We'll see what they decide to rotate to, but they have the utility. 18x Kairos to open up all these hatches and can rotate as they please. Y'all got facing a lot of damage seemingly from that freezer position, put down to below 58 E, as Los are, well, were previously double stacking at the bottom freezer to try to play aggressively. Now, falling back a little bit. Nice little Vout cam by Sexy Cake there. Can see if anybody from OXG sets up for a laundry push, and if they do, that would heavily telegraph and indicate to Los what OXG well, our game plan is. Yeah, most definitely. A little addition to the ACOGs on the defense. And personally, my favorite one to use out of all of them at the current moment. That's even over the MP5 and the MP5K. It's got to be Goya with the Vector, man. Oh my God. Is that thing a lethal weapon? It's it truly though. insane, man. Hey, what'd you say? You, you, you take, said it's got takes, a pretty bad kick? Takes you on a ride, yeah. Uh, dude, that with Compensator, I'm telling you, man, right. it's it's Maybe. absolutely disgusting. Maybe. Just, just try it out sometime. Same thing for, well, for y'all in chat, well, you know? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. Sexy Cake, one and six currently. He'll have to try it out because we're in another 5e5. Similar position that we actually found when Lotes were on the attacks. And a bit of another awkward position as the smoke canisters are stalling oxygen out on this push. Dream recognizes the need to push in and off the back of the flashes, he will do so. Lotes have been able to back off of the bunker and able to back off the Dream's face. Two kills, make that three, make that two for oxygen. Five total, if math isn't your strong suit, I'll help you out along the way. But OXG still lacking control, still lacking an advantage. This will try to retake it a bunker, but one flash isn't good enough to meet the M59 of Bursa. So what's newers to do, but to rush in and maybe go one for one, but not even achieve that. First round on the defense goes the way of Los, just one round away from closing that gap. The Ash player with the two kills and the Ash player, the only one left alive. Where have we seen this one before? Oh wait, it's every game of Siege you've ever seen in your entire life. Well, looks like Oxygen not able to pull the wool over the eyes of the defense there in the dying moments of their execute as Los looking so very solid and wouldn't you know it having a solid understanding of a, a play that they had just been going for themselves on that basement as Oxygen try and work their way in with gun fodder and everything else in between getting chucked across the two lines of these respective squads but Oxygen not able to get the big kills that was the moment there for Los as they were able to clean up three players so quick it'll make your head spin and that's usually a solid way to set yourself up for success. And there, now uh, the defend win rate for base is up to 50% so far. Not not something I expected us to have to work our way up towards, but those have had uh, some pleasant surprises up until this point. They'll move up to dorms for the next defense. I have to imagine from OXG, just as we saw something pretty normal in the first round, we'll likely see something a bit normal again. Very minimal hard breaching, but when you have a defensive team running that open setup in bedroom, you don't need to bring the Ace, the Maverick, the Thermite, all these different things. But if you do want to take Attic, we'll have Furious up to T3, who has been spotted, and without any warding glasses to blind himself, and maybe a cutoff angle outside the window, no, will suddenly fall back as... Even with a deployable shield there, he's like, I don't know if I want to play this aggressively. Yeah, that's a little terrifying, honestly. Didn't seem too confident in getting back through that rotate either, but as soon as I say that, he's actually stepped up to the plate, so he just wants to try and be a thorn in their side as long as he can. You need to try and play things out on this stairwell. They've gotten Yaga in as well, so potential kill here if Yaga ends up misstepping on T3. We get another drone in here to try and deal with Void. Well, they won't. They won't have to either. As he's high tilted out of there, all the way over through Freezer. Actually, at that point, all the way up White Stairs. Doesn't have to worry about too much. Is he? Romeo's going to get a drone in. He sees the frost, and I know where he's gone. All three things up over on the far side for auction. Is more than likely begin working things from that tower position before adjusting to greener pastures to more than likely get open master wall. I'm still kind of stuck on that deployable shield. Just the middle of t2 but i mean i'm sad i don't get to see its purpose furious is instead rotated over to classroom we'll see how strong the flank walk is obviously e gomez over here but 
you're not super weary of this position. I mean, you're more so focused on getting the top four clear, which, I mean, understandable in that aspect, but Yuris could hit a flank up armory, and as Newers and Dream are both looking to flood into bedroom at some point, it would be a big problem. Intel game also big problem. One drone remaining, and he's still found all the way in classroom. So the low drone's not really affecting OXG all that much. It doesn't inhibit them from getting that opening. It was a solid job of at least delaying things out. We'll put oxygen down to submitted here to try and solve the puzzle in round eight. Morse does have control of main stairs. Is the majority of oxygen going to be working their way in from this trophy position? We could we should get somebody working their way up white, maybe a potential attic player too, but let's have to see. Have the Grim working his way in here with the bees. Gonna be Yaga over on that end. Another hard breach tool out as well. Rai is gonna be playing directly underneath this breach, and with such low information, this is gonna be so very solid. No nades out. Yago with a big kill on the Bursa. Rai is not forced to move yet. Stun out. He sees the player and get the case down too. Stuns go out. No other kills either. A moment in history there for Rise, but one that will pass us all by as he could have potentially shut down Oxygen's round, but it's gonna be all Oxygen and specifically all Gomez for OXG to pick up their offense. Just a symptom of, I mean, no no drones remaining to find out that position. Also, again, a late execute, so Dream just assuming nobody's riding behind the couch ends up paying for it, but OXG don't really end up paying for it overall because there, as opposed to maybe some of the other dorms attacks we saw from Los, despite the low time, the positions were all generally good. We see Yaga pushing up Attic. We see the Flood in from Bedroom Shore. More specifically, in from Trophy as well, that's able to get that trade and cut down that Wamai. So OXG, of course, winning the gunfights, as we're often a necessary prerequisite for a lot of the wins we saw from Los, the two on their attacking half, needed to win a lot of those fights for the round to go their way because they were struggling with flooding in with very low time and very, very limited intel. But of course, the fights go their way, and they have enough control with that attic push, with that trophy flood, and even with Dream dying, they can get the trades, have a lot to build on a successful round for, and then it just so happens we kind of just completely fall apart after that, and the round ends very quickly after. So, Basement maybe not going OXG's way, but they're able to win their first round on the attack on Dorms, which, one of the two primary bomb sites, you're not going to be complaining. Yeah, most definitely. And, I mean, so far, so good for Oxygen. I mean, their defenses, yeah, there was some exploitation that Los was able to find, and mostly it was just the ball peen hammer, right? As they were just constantly smacking Oxygen upside the head with it. But Oxygen able to find their footing with some very solid defensive rounds going for themselves as well as that solid offense is we're able to finally get it over on Los, who was looking uh, pretty solid honestly i would say when it came down to it able to get rid of the drone game keep things elongated there with that frost although he does die he does waste so much time and makes things a little bit more complicated for oxygen but they had so many solid guns working their way into that round that even though they were able to get the case on the floor for Los's sake oxygen still were well within their right to take that one off the back of the previous cannon fodder and that's exactly what they did so all around there from them. We're on a tech pause now, folks. I do believe I hear some shotguns and some barbed wire in the background, so I don't think we're too far off from swinging back in. And there we are, round nine ahead of us. And there's Oxygen looking to push on to penultimate point. Looks have gone to the tertiary side as well. Won't try Gorms a second time. They'll immediately hop down to the middle floor, which is where we usually, usually, being a word that's doing a lot of heavy lifting in that sentence. You usually see teams pick up at least one round on the attack, but OXG able to mount a convincing Dorms attack might be able to, like I said, push to match point here. They can take the vertical and open up stage or just accomplish whatever they want to do. I mean, we don't see some of the hallmarks of a stage plan. We don't see the OSA. Don't see any of the hallmarks of a split plan, like a Monty. So a bit more flexible of a lineup for OXG. We've got the Selmas to open up splitter stage. They've got the smoke bolts and the fire bolts to flush out positions. We we'll do a lot of things with this lineup. Oh yeah, most definitely. Have solid displacement as well as solid map control as well if they can get established. And well, that's one way to do it, isn't it? That's twice now that Gomez has been able to secure something like this just via lobby. And we even saw that when Oxygen was on their defense as well. They ended up having Newers get a nice pick just based off of uh, misinformation via that front door here too. Alos once again on the back foot They'll look to try and find a pick of their own here in round nine. Try to fight back. 
Sure, but that's also one of the weirdest spots to be in on the defense when you lose that opening pick and it's not really because of some bit of a setup that maybe you can rely on it's just oh, oh I, th I thought gomez got the kill and i was like uh no he did not but yog is instead the one to get that kill on a burst and basically the exact same thing i was going to say which is you haven't lost a kill because oxygen were trying to like counter set up it all you've just dropped the body somewhere and have to carry on in a 4v5 then a 3v5 then a 3v4, then a 2v4, and now a 1v4, and oh, now yeah. a 0v4. Match point, OXG, I suppose, as Los just peak every angle known to man. Dude, Newers is so locked in, he created a vacuum in time. That's crazy. It's so insane. A huge kill set there from him, though. They're at the tail end of that, based off of bag of oxygen just really working their way in on small i mean that's not something that you see every single day uh but for newer as it most definitely is is his kill or rather his name lights up the kill feed they'll take it to los as they try to work their way in on that tertiary site to hopefully get around over an auction but obviously not the case no definitely not i mean like what do you say there i mean los were taking fights rotating and died Unlucky, I suppose. GG go next. Uh, at least you won basement before. This wasn't a site where OXG tried to fl flood in off the back of some utility and again were I mean, repelled. Close were able to get that basement win percentage up to 50%, or right, technically 75% for them as they won three of the four basement attempts so far. Attacker defense. Honestly, Sam, this has been a very weird game. Like, I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep, like, the facade up, but this has just been such an odd game. Attack, defense for either of these teams. We've just seen so much weird stuff go on. From Absolutely. the double mirror window laundry to everyone peeking every angle in the previous round. This is just, uh, I'm just sitting back, waiting to see. And there's ACOGs in the water, my friend. <laughs> the, the, actually, I don't think there are. Ooh, no, Sexy Cakes probably got the ACOG. Most, oh, at least for the defense. Yeah, no, the fact that Los is going to lose this round just because they don't have ACOGs, actually. Yeah, yeah. There's, unfortunately, a stark ACOG deficiency in the Los lineup that is going to come back to bite. Absolutely. Oh, man, an oxygen. Man, there's nothing really to do on these mid floors. And there's no way. No, we got it. We actually have to be trolling you, now. There's no, no way. No, no dude. Dude, there are three dude. reinforcements in dude. pocket. Dude. Oh my god. We've gosh. got three you guys. Oh man. This isn't even like this isn't even like a roam setup either. They just straight that up is, didn't get ahead. That is that is honking. Uh, as just Fresh not, on Desk they've... would say, I cannot be bothered. And I can't actually, Carter, so I'm not In... even gonna talk about it. I'm gonna let, no. of all people, I'm gonna let Twitch chat just roast. Or I'm just gonna let them cook. And then we're just gonna move on from this, okay? You, okay, I, I mean I guess I mean, we see Okay, New is holding in a, not, even, not really an aggressive angle, but I suppose you could call it aggressive pass or whatever. Holding an angle on Freezer. <laughs> Bursa tries to take a fight or rise. One of the SAS operators takes a fight. Doesn't win it, but puts New to 50 HP. That's fine. The meeting hatch is still in the back of my head. I'm trying to really just focus on other things. And this mirror setup, unfortunately, will be countered a little bit. We have yet one remaining Ash Charge to crack that mirror and make the Freezer push a little easier. We've tried to X Kyro set instead. Unfortunately, there is still somebody in Freezer been shot how are oxg going to deal with it i know we joke about the meeting hatch but in all seriousness minute left haven't been able to find a kill still clearing out positions what are they going to manifest here it seems to be an e-box side thing yeah let's wait for the pop off here really we all know what the answer is let's not kid ourselves it's gonna be brutality it's gonna go one of two ways blue or orange green or orange in this scenario here Oxygen can work their way in from these pivotal positions. Things like the stairwell, things like the hatch, all up for grabs. Forget about that freezer player either. It's Los most definitely will not. This is a big moment here for Dream and Los across the board, making mincemeat out of the offense. It's up to Newers again, but this time it's a clutch moment for him. On the Ash ACOG, last time with the ARX, this time with the R4C on a low HP. Say the same for the Warden. Gonna be bursted to pick that one up. Lowe's will survive elimination, at least for the first game. Trying to force this overtime here. We'll be able to find a successful defense, but I mean, wow. What what an insane set of circumstances that we have seen constantly befalling these two sides, respectively.
across this entire game. And honestly, Carter, the only thing I can chalk that up to, at least for the hats, just looking across the lineup and trying to make sense of it, is got to be the fact that they had three three armors there uh, on top of the smoke as well as the Goyo. And I mean, if they also on top of that have smoke, yeah, like doing sight setup with a shotgun as well, Goyo has all of those canisters to put up too. There is a realm listen. where somebody just was like, ah, oh, maybe I can get it, I, maybe I can't. I mean, Sam, I don't, definitely not on the same page. We can say that for listen, sure. I want, I want to let you finish. It's just, it's one, there's one thing clear to me, okay? Don't take Lux to the basement bomb site. I just don't take them to it. Just don't do it. <laughs> They've won it every time, or almost every time. Almost every time. Four of the five of the times. times. <laughs> Eight, well, after that round, 80% of the time. time. Damn, well. Yeah, we've seen, we, we have had... 10 rounds, five of them have been basement. Four of them have been Los victories. All of their rounds, attack or defense, have been on basement. Now, unfortunately, that does not, that does not go to particularly good omen as we move to the dorms bomb site upstairs. That, this is the time to start turning things around. This is the time for things to change. Because to be fair, when it's come to floods, Los seem to be the kings and OXG had very minimal droning in the light, latter half of the dorms attack. And some positions went unclear. There are points where Lowe's can make something magical happen. Okay. <laughs> All right. I like it. Here he's going to prep the Eva uh, Barrier there just to threaten the fact that he could hop out. He's the drone there from Yogg. Yogg going to put some bees down low. There's no way he swings off of this, right? Oh, yeah. Could be the freest kill that he has ever seen in his life is uh i mean <laughs> hey listen i know it's north He's america i know it's north america los i know that like you guys see a lot of cheeky dumb things happen in an al right just, but like come on guys give us the benefit yeah, of the doubt here yeah, we got like, a few brazilians on oxygen that was that was, that was like a redid out the ego on that he's like I, nobody's watching the big tower jump out <laughs> surely nobody's gonna be watching this that's just all right that's the Azami gone, I suppose, and that's, uh, I don't believe they've got the reinforcement off in Attic, so that's just free for the taking. No hard breach necessary, of course, as we mentioned. Not a whole lot of hard breach on Oxygen's previous attack, but now you got the two hard breach charges, the two sets of them in Dream and Yaga's hands. You got the Selmas as well. So the rotate over to bedroom side, uh, you should be able to open that wall. I don't care if it takes 15 seconds or a minute. 50. You should be able to open it based off of sheer utility. OXG care to do so? That's to be determined. A minute 20 seconds left, and we actually haven't seen a real entry in a bedroom site yet. Yeah, there's so many oddities going on. Really impressive stuff, honestly, at the end of the day, that either one of these teams are able to kind of kind of line throughout all of this. Although, obviously, murky, but somebody's got to do the heavy lifting, right? So far here, so good for both squads inside of this. As we go down to the last minute, Los were able to find a pick as well to be able to equalize things here. And who better to get it on than Gomez? He hasn't exactly been popping off, but the kills that he has found have been so very pivotal. Definitely want to try and remove him from this round and make the most of it. Okay. Going in here for Dream. Able to find a nice home for Gomez to be able to stare from in his post-mortem state. Eyes will continue to hold on to white stairs. Some drone work still to be implemented here from OXG. Versus is going to take a little bit of damage too. So a little freeze coming out there from the defense and from two. I'm uh, going to be able to take down Legacy as well. Another hard breach piece coming out here from Dream. And into the dying moments we go. So oh. Oxygen try and move us away from Oregon. Try and move us away. And I get it's a 4v3, but such a late flood and so many angles still in the hands of Los. But DS finds oh. one sexy cake fried by Big Window. It seems to simply not matter as Bursa on the final swing finds nothing for his troubles. An extremely weird 7 4. A lot of crazy moments, a lot of bizarre plays, but we end up at one of the most normal score lines in Rainbow Six. A regulation victory, but one where Los had some fight. No, she, I suppose, were the better team overall. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I think the best way to put this, Carter, is that this was most definitely a clash of personalities. Uh, these two teams having uh, kind of a different way of going about things that definitely made things interesting, especially for these basement attacks and That's defenses it. from Los. I mean, I just 
it seems like they are the kings of that portion of the map. If you ever have to deal with Los on a basement defense or basement offense when it comes to Oregon, you better look out. But besides that, it was all green all day, just like this green screen behind me. It's oxygen for victory here on Oregon. Is that why you put the green screen up? You knew oh, yeah, you were winning today? Of course, yeah, that's exactly why, you know what I mean? I even wore the uh, the blast hoodie and it's got, it's got green on the back too. I was gonna stand up and show you, but I'm, yeah, uh, you guys I'm don't deserve a, that. I'm wearing a blue sweater, so I was impartial in today's matchup, but I mean, Listen, like, I'm going to keep it real with you guys. That was a day one game. Like, that's just day one game. OXG figuring out a new calling system, struggling to attack basement. Even on those dorms attacks, very slow, very linear. Relying on winning gunfights is what it is. Los, new team in general. We're just, they're at a completely different region. Like, we're all just trying to figure stuff out. We're all trying to feel things out. And, I mean, I guess, you know, if you thought Oregon was boring, maybe at this particular time, You'll have a better... I don't know. Let, we, we've got more games coming up after this. I'm done, I'm done trying to rationalize it. We have a break. We'll see you after. If you learned anything from this game, it at Los are really, really, really good at Oregon Basement and not much else. That's the one thing they were able to do phenomenally in this matchup against Oxygen was attack and defense. It felt like they had that one bomb site really figured out, but everything else around that still has something that is left to be desired. It's on the table that they can get better at in the future. OXG walk away with a pretty good win overall. Just need to get that one site figured out. Well, I mean, I learned not to choose Los, so my <laughs> predictions kind of good went job, out the window man. at that point. Thanks, you, Los. You make your bed, you lie in it, buddy. That's just how it goes. Thanks. I mean, Los had a really good start. The basement is the hardest site to attack, the easiest site to defend. So getting two very aggressive Oregon uh, attacks right off the right off the rip. I really liked how Los was doing it, but it looked like every round that they were attacking. It looked predetermined, a little bit of predetermined, like they had it set up. Obviously, the lack of info on Los gave them the edge in that regard because the first round, they hit a blitz rush through. The next round on the basement, they had a front side hit with a plant. So they were able to scrape those rounds out and defend them. But when it came to the other side of things, when they actually had to defend top floor or attack against the other sides, they really just didn't have a response to what OXG was throwing at them. I think a lot of people assumed Lowe's brand new team, therefore underdog, especially because they have some rookies and they've never played at this sort of status before. But how well did OXG play overall? Like, even if their opponent might have been a bit weaker, did they still play a good game or did, were there some errors there you could spot? Yeah, definitely. OXG played extremely well. I mean, that predetermination that Fox was talking about that Los was putting into play then ended up falling into OXG's favor because then Los didn't know what to do. Los had no counter for it. Los didn't know how to play against it. Then they would read into plays. Then everything just looked telegraphed at that point. So, I mean, Oxygen was very quick the adaptations to figure out what they needed to do in order to counter what Los was trying to do. Yeah, I wouldn't even say that Los was an underwhelming team. I felt like they showed a lot of good things. An attacking basement, you obviously are going to have stress on you if you're losing the basements of Oregon. That's all about the map, is getting those Oregon basements. But the fact that OXG was able to regain, take a little more time, and once Los used all, everything out of their ar arsenal, they didn't have a response for the third basement attack. OXG was actually able to bring it back to a 4-2 on their defense. And then once they got to their attacks, their attacks were phenomenally well. The way that they were able, well, besides on the basement, the basement, they definitely took a little right, bit of right. time. But for the top floor, when they were able to attack, I really loved the way that they were taking their time to get master, get big tower. And then when they'd go to execute, they had like a 2-2-1 two, two, setup. So two people would jump into white, go up white, two people would play trophy, and one person would play through attic. And that pinch on the site just completely suffocated all of the Lowe's players. They didn't have a response to what OXG were playing. They didn't have any type of play. They were really relying on the game plan that they had. And unfortunately, the game plan OXG read into it the longer the rounds went, the longer the game went. Well, I'll say this. I mean, it's good to know, too, that even with this brand new iteration of OXG, we still historically as a team and as an org are horrible at Oregon basement. <laughs> yeah, that is no true. No matter what, if OXG is playing Oregon basement, there's just some curse I, for you it's guys. It's the one site that you should win and it's the <laughs> site that you lose, I guess. Well, they got most things right, especially because Diaz had a really good oh, performance all throughout. There were a few rounds where he had a couple 3Ks, but for us, he's the standout. If 
the, the best thing about this, I think, for me, is the understanding that just because they add two new players in, they were able to pick up with something really, really positive immediately, especially if he's their top corner player. Again, I said it. You know, if you're going to get rid of Fox, you're going to get rid of Fish, you need two people that are going to be able to come in and do that. Both Diaz and Gomez are those players, and we just saw Diaz for his first day playing on OSG, playing on the new setups, yep. playing on this map specifically. I mean, Diaz was taking those aggressive gunfights. Diaz wasn't playing, you know, this new version of Diaz. Like, Diaz was playing to his strength and exactly why OXG picked him up, and he displayed it beautifully here with the rounds and the multi-kills that he was just pulling off in general against Los. Especially with the workload that everybody from the core of OXG, Yogg, New, and Dream were taking on when they made the decision to adapt to a new style of play, that extra workload puts a lot of pressure on those players. And when you pick up a player like Diaz, who's very consistent and very reliable, you know he's going to stay alive to those last couple of moments. Yeah. A lot of people may see that as a bad thing, but when it comes to a game like this, he was able to put up amazing numbers and every round he was a factor in those late rounds where he just didn't die. And that's a quality that a lot of players don't have to be able to not die, but be proactive while also not dying. Couple new team mistakes here from Los though. I mean, if you're gonna uh, try to attack Oregon Basement and you don't take Case with you on a 30 second execute, you just leave it upstairs. Like I mean, there was, there was a few rounds where we would see Los in the possible like in the best case scenario of a winning position, but like you said, the bomb being left on the middle floor of a basement attack round wasn't great. There was one round from Farius laying in kids, playing on games, just could have had it, could have had the two kill that could have easily set that round up for them, but waited too long, ended up stalling out. OXG ends up bringing it back. So by by all means, like Los don't look bad at all. There was a few hiccups, and as a brand new team coming to the league, like, this is what you're going to look at. You're going to go back and be like, okay, this is what we need to do. This is how we're going to fix it. So I have no doubt going into the rest of the next week, like, Los is going to be performing even better than what we saw them in today. Yeah, it came down to the experience. And like those two first Oregon basement rounds, one they, once the game plan was out, right, cats out of the bag, they had to come up with something on the fly in the third one, on the fly for the other two sites. And they didn't have enough time to be able to recognize what they needed to do to get the opening, to get a pick, and that's where flaws come in. That's where you leave the case and meeting when you go to hit the site. And so even though the executes maybe came in the last couple of seconds, obviously there was a mixed match of information. There was holes, and that comes with being a new team. Well, let's see what Dream had to say about his first game with a brand new roster. Mitch, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hey, I do Dream. hear Mitch in the back line. Let's go, dude. Congrats on the dub. First off, just on uh, on the face of things, you've been with the same core for a really long time. So talk to me what it's like adding two brand new players to a roster at the same time and what that for your team today. Uh, it was definitely a lot of work. I mean, we only had two weeks after invite, so we really had to put like a uh, pedal to the grindstone and just uh, put in a lot, a lot of hours going over every strat, every call out, every single map, like, we wanted to show out and perform the stage. It's not like we're taking a stage off, you know what I mean? Like, really had to grind, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm happy we, like, showed that the grind paid off the, this first game day. Yeah, and again, congratulations, Dream. Good talking to you. A question that I have for you, is there a specific reason why you guys picked Oregon? I did talk about in the pregame or the pre-show of this that you guys, you know, it going to Oregon, it looked like a map that, regardless of being a brand new team, it's going to be pretty much set in stone of how the map is going to look. Nothing's going to catch you off guard like a bank or anything like that. Was kind of was that kind of the thought process of going into Oregon? Yeah, I mean, uh, all our players are disgusting, and Oregon's kind of just a shooter map. So we didn't have a lot of info on them, and we're like, well, what can they really, like, surprise us with on Oregon is, like, nothing. So yeah. we're just like, yeah, let's go there and let's let's take. Oh, did we lose Mitch? Oh, is he there? He might be there. We'll figure it out in the back end and get him back into the call. He, he does bring up a good point, though. I think nothing about the way that this game played out surprised him because they mm -hmm. had a whole bunch of time to prep already. Mm -hmm. But again, you only had two weeks to work with a brand team. So getting a dub first game has to feel really good. I would say that nothing surprised them, but those basement Oregon attacks, definitely. <laughs> I would say those things yeah. were very surprising and they were very fast from Lowe's. Mm -hmm. But OXG was able to recognize it and adapt and every round it looked like they were just getting one step further and you're right they're not there isn't that many different things that you can do in Oregon so once they ran out of tricks they ran out of things up their sleeve unfortunately OXG was just obviously the better team in my opinion to 
how consistent and how well they all bounce off of each other. Sure. And I'll say this. This isn't even a true testament for me of the new OXG because Oregon is such a default map and same thing for Los. I mean, both teams look really good, but I really got to see the in-depth map pool, what these teams can do and what they can provide on maps. Because again, Oregon is such a default map that it's not showing a ton of what the new iteration could possibly look like. That's so for fair. me, there's still a lot of tests that need to be proven from both sides, but they still both look good nonetheless. And it's not just a map thing. The meta is going to affect every map Definitely. in a different way too. So Definitely. it's not to say that you can fall back on a lot of what you used in the past, not just because the team is different, but because everything about the way that you play Siege and Deadly Omen is a lot different compared to how it was just immediately three months ago. We are now halfway done with our first, but technically second play day of the new NAL season. And we'll be right back with the doozy Sonics and Dark Zero coming up for the break.